Welcome back, my friends, to another Chinese Sayings podcast. Laszlo Montgomery here with another good and decent Chung Yu. Another useful one, if I may add, with a most excellent provenance, same as last time. De Grossa Historica, Sima Qian, the one who gave us the records of the grand historian, the Shi Qi, one of the best sources for fabulous Chinese idioms. Today's Chinese saying, Han Liu Jia Bei. We can all relate to this one, and now that the summer is here and the times are tense all over the world, this one's so useful it belongs in your random access memory rather than putting it on a five and a quarter inch floppy drive. Han Liu Jia Bei. Let's break it down into its constituent parts. Han means sweat or perspiration. And Liu means anything that flows, like water. So Han Liu would mean the sweat was flowing. And jia means to wet or to soak or to drench. And your bei, that's your back or the back of the body. Sweat, flowing, drench, back. Eh, this is one of those sayings you could sort of get it. You know where this one is going. Its meaning is clear. So here's a story that Sima Qian wrote about in a chapter taken from the records of the Grand Historian called Chen Chengxiang, Shi Jia, Prime Minister Chen Ping. This is a good one because it revolves around the infamous Liu clan disturbance of 180 BC, a perennial favorite among lovers of popular Chinese history with a little bit of the old ultra-violence. Empress Liu, I will go out on a limb here and declare she has got to make almost anyone's list of the top five most reviled royal figures in Chinese history. Empress Liu, Liu Hou. You see... She was the empress of the Han dynasty founder, Liu Bang. Now, we remember him also as Han Gaozu. When the Qin dynasty up and died like it did so suddenly in 210 BC, there were two main contenders for the control of the empire that Qin Shi Huang left behind. And these were, of course, Xiang Yu of Chu and Liu Bang of Han. Chen Ping, he was a capable fellow who at first served Xiang Yu, but defected to Liu Bang and ended up becoming one of his most trusted and indispensable advisors. In fact, Liu Bang was so beholden to Chen Ping, he made him his chancellor when he began building his Han dynasty. So when Emperor Gaozu died in 195 BC, Empress Liu was able to jump right in and install her eldest son onto the throne. This was the weak and feeble Emperor Hui of Han. And she won't be the last Empress Dowager to do this, but with essentially no one but her in charge, she grabbed hold of the reins of power and ran the show in China for a good 15 years until she died in 180 BC. Her son, Emperor Hui, according to Sima Qian, was so terrified of his mother he dared not ever push back on anything she said. And with no one to ever tell her no, Empress Liu was able to control most of the affairs of state, she could even call a deer a horse if she wanted to, and she proceeded to stuff the imperial court with all her Liu family relatives as princes and ministers of China. If there was a plum position, it went to one of her kin. And when poor old Emperor Hui finally breathed his last at the tender age of 24 in 188 BC, Empress Liu declared herself regent for a new child emperor that she had installed on the throne. And for eight more years, she ruled the Han Empire. And when she finally reached the end of her days, one of her final acts was to name two of her Liu clan relatives Field Marshal and Prime Minister of China. She also gave these two relatives control over the Han Empire's southern and northern armies, respectively. She played the long game and had made it her mission to maintain absolute power over the empire her husband had founded by controlling all the most powerful and important offices. And Empress Liu accomplished this by having all these important positions within the Han Empire filled by members of the Liu clan, and not the founders of the Han dynasty themselves, the Liu clan. The court ministers loyal to the Han dynasty watched this state of affairs with great anxiety, but while Empress Liu still lived, they dared not make any moves against her. But now that she was gone, one minister named Zhou Bo finally decided it was time for action. 
With the support of Chen Ping, Han Gaozu's loyal advisor, Zhou Bo led a sustained military campaign that wiped out each and every one of the Lus from power. Then, once the Lus were neutralized, Zhou Bo and Chen Ping wisely installed Emperor Gaozu's son by another wife, his emperor. And this son was named Liu Heng. Liu Heng would go on to become the renowned Emperor Wen of Han, one of China's truly great emperors. Emperor Wen would be followed by his son, Emperor Jing, another great Han emperor. And rounding out this trifecta of great emperors was Emperor Jing's son, who reigned 54 years as the consequential Emperor Wu. And together, this father and son and grandson were called by many among China's greatest emperors. When Emperor Wen first ascended to the throne, he rewarded Zhou Bo and Chen Ping by naming them co-prime ministers, rewarding them for their role in squelching the Liu clan. Now with that long historical introduction out of the way, here's the story behind our Cheng Yu for this time. Chen Ping took to affairs of state like a fish to water. He was a natural at delegating, keeping accounts, and presiding over judicial matters. Zhou Bo, on the other hand, well, he was, a, he was a military man through and through and not so handy behind a desk. But now that there was peace throughout the land, Zhou Bo's martial skills were no longer needed. But in his new role as co-prime minister, he found himself way out of his element, not to mention his comfort zone. One day early in his reign, Emperor Wen held court in order to familiarize himself with his country. He addressed Zhou Bo first. Minister, can you inform me how many criminal cases were tried in the Han courts this year? Zhou Bo had no idea and could only shake his head in reply. Then Emperor Wen asked again, Minister Zhou, can you tell me how much the Han court collected in grain and silver and how much were the uh, public expenditures? Once again, Zhou Bo, he hadn't a clue. Now here's where we get this Chinese saying. Poor old Zhou Bo began to sweat profusely from all the pressure. Emperor Wen was asking him all these detailed questions, and he couldn't even answer a single one. And everyone was watching him. The shame and embarrassment he felt caused his body to sweat, and it flowed down his back and drenched his imperial court robes as Emperor Wen asked him question after question, and all of them he couldn't answer. Finally, Chen Ping stepped in to rescue his colleague. Uh, Your Majesty, I've delegated matters of criminal justice to a minister of justice and matters of income and expenditure to a minister in charge of the treasury. Why don't you summon them, since these are their areas of expertise and they'll be able to answer your questions at once? Emperor Wen was extremely pleased with Chen Ping's answer and no longer questioned Zhou Bo. Zhou Bo breathed a temporary sigh of relief, but that day, when he got home from the palace, he submitted a request for early retirement. His inability to answer even one of Emperor Wen's questions clearly showed that he was not suited for this kind of work. Instead, he had already served the Han Dynasty to the best of his abilities by leading the military action against the Liu clan and restoring the Liu family to power. So after the appropriate honors were paid to Zhou Bo, and he had been properly thanked for his service to the empire, he made a graceful exit stage right, not unlike Cincinnati's back in 458 BC. Chen Ping ended up taking over as the only prime minister and served the emperor well. As for Zhou Bo, history remembers him favorably for his key role in restoring the fortunes of the ruling Liu clan and restoring them to power. So you could say Chen Ping really served Liu Bang not only before he became emperor, but long after he was gone as well. We have terms like sweating buckets, sweating like a pig, pouring with sweat. And when you're walking down some street on a late August day or night, you too might be Han Liu Jia Bei. Anytime you're schwitzing in a terrible way, Han Liu Jia Bei. Yes, this common Cheng Yu gets taken out of its wrapper and used for any occasion that calls for it. And next time you use it, remember the sweaty appearance of poor Zhou Bo, who was forced to endure a grilling from no less a personage than the Han Emperor Wen. So this is where we get the Chinese saying, Han Liu Jia Bei. 
You use it to describe either yourself or someone else soaked with sweat from the sweltering temperature or from being in the hot seat in a given situation. And that, my good friends, is going to be that. Thanks again to good old Emma over in the UK. Man, she runs a tight ship there at the Teacup Changyu Yenqiu Zhongxin. Thanks again, Emma. This here is Laszlo Montgomery signing off from hot and sweaty Los Angeles, California. Han Liu Jia Bei. Trust me when I say I'll be back again once more with feeling for another useful episode of the Chinese Sayings Podcast. <laughs>